Right, so this works just fine, but of course we need to set an interval, and we need this interval to basically update the duration for us on every tick, on every second, basically. And we can already find the example of how to do this on the reactjs.org website, on the official documentation website. So you can see here that we've got a very similar example where it basically calculates the number of seconds that has passed once you basically enter the web page. So in this example, they have a constructor where they set a state with the number of seconds then on every single tick, they basically make a call to the set state method. So the set state method is basically going to update the state of the component. And then they basically increment the number of seconds by one. And lastly, so what happens here, as you can see, they use two special methods. Like I mentioned before, class-based components are different from functional-based components in that they also allow you to have not only state but also lifecycle hooks or methods. So in this case, one of the methods they use is component did mount. So this method is basically going to fire once the component did get mounted to the DOM. So once it received all the props and once the state got initialized, this method is going to fire. So in there, they basically have a property assigned to the class, where this is basically going to be an interval and it's going to be a function that's basically going to run every second and it's going to call a tick method. And the tick method is basically going to just update the state. It's going to increment the number of seconds by one, right? And then they also have component will unmount. So this method is going to be called before the component gets unmounted from the DOM. And one of the use cases for this is, let's say in a parent component, you might have, let's say a button that hides and shows the child component. So if you click the button to hide the component, that component is going to be unmounted from the DOM, and this is when the method is going to be triggered. Of course, there's multiple scenarios in which this could happen, but that's just one of them. And what they want to do is they want to clear the interval, and that makes a lot of sense, right? Because you want to clear or just remove the set interval call or hook that basically executes every second. Because if you don't have the component anymore, it doesn't make sense to continue calling the tick method. It's just going to break your code. So we're going to do a similar thing in our application here. So I will do the following. So let's do component did mount. So that's going to be the hook. And I guess I'm just going to do the very same thing. I'm going to set an interval, which is going to be a call to set interval function. I'll use an arrow function as well. And in there, we're basically going to do this set state. So we'll provide a new object here with the duration and uh, this is basically going to be the same call to get remaining time method that we created. And then let's set this to one second. This is basically 1000 milliseconds or just one second. And this should already work. It should basically update. Yeah, as you can see here, every second this hook that we created, right? The anonymous function that basically sets the state, basically updates the state with a new duration. In this case, it's going to calculate the date of now. It's going to calculate the date of the new year, year of now plus one. Then it's going to calculate the difference, and then basically it's going to give you back the duration object, which is a special built-in object in Moment.js. And then when that's done, it's basically going to set that to a duration property on the state. And that property is going to override the existing duration property. And that's how the state gets updated. And basically that happens every second and that's why it updates on every second. So it's gonna update the number of seconds, minutes, hours, and days. And this is how the countdown timer is gonna work. Now, of course, we can't forget to add another one. So let's do component will unmount. This is gonna be called just before the component gets unmounted. And we want to call clear interval and we're gonna pass this interval in there. This interval basically is going to store an ID of the set interval function. And once we call a clear interval method, it's basically going to destroy that interval so that it doesn't continue to execute once the component was destroyed or unmounted. 